Hello guys and welcome to this video in where I'm gonna show you how I made some of the sounds in my sample pack, the Metroidvania Kick and Modern Fantasy Tools. Um, most of most of the pack is like Foley and field recordings I did with my Zoom um, recorder and this road mic I have right here. But the really interesting sounds are the one that I made uh, with Ableton Live, like sound designing and layering stuff and weird processing. So we're gonna take a look for them. So as I said, most of the pack is like, you can see here is like Foley, but we're gonna take a look at this kind of sound. Or dashes. Or like, for example, uh, magics. And UI, I'm going to show you a quick process of how I make UI sounds. So that's all. Let's have a look. So I opened up this project in where I have like the player movement, sound design stuff and the UI stuff. And we're going to take a quick look over the jump and the dash sounds. Uh, as you can see here, I don't have just a single sound for each movement and for each instance. Instead of it, I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like eight or ten instances for the same sound with variations on my own recordings and my, on my own sound designing, which I resampled here. So I have like different jumps and not just one. So the uh, sound designer can use it in the game to give like the variety and movement and, and texture to the game. We're gonna take a listen, have a listen right here, the jump. So this is actually one of the most simple sounds I made in this pack. And it's made up of uh, three different sounds layered. The first one, is the sound of my mouth doing what it's supposed to be a jump because I started off like thinking okay a jump must sound like like the pitch up with the sibilance on the noise so what I did is record my own mouth and you can see here this is all I all of my mouth sounds recorded with this mic and then I chopped up and choose the the best ones and this is how they sound by themselves i did only a little bit of an eq here but not, nothing crazy i mean i i think i didn't like process at all just just my mouth <laughs> really simple okay so on top of that I put a whoosh, obviously, because any jump sound in like um, animation game and stuff like this is uh, needs like the uh, a whoosh sound. And I did this one myself with a flute I've got from the sample pack. I use I use in the sample pack. This flute is from Morocco, and it's opened by the two two sides. So it sounds like a plastic pipe or stuff, but it's a little bit weird because it's like a wood and, and material and it sounds really nice. So I just recorded myself doing this. So I did like 20 times, recorded all of them here and then chose the best ones. That's all. I gave it like pitch variations, like minus four semitones, minus three semitones, minus four semitones. Um, you can see pitch variations here, but that's the, the flute washing through the mic. Uh, and I did like no processing. I, I think I, I put like a little super short reverb on it and then render it and freeze and flatten. I cannot remember, but I, I did nothing crazy. It's just like the raw sound more mostly 
and with the j with the mouth sound they both sound like this and then just to add a little bit of a character of a tonal thing there i used operator really simple here in ableton um with sine wave and a little bit of a noise on top of it uh, 200 hertz approx and then i variate this and start resampling uh, i played mostly with a pitch envelope doing like 48 semitones like ew, ew. and uh and the time and spread and tone and i did like a lot of variations and resampled all of them so they sound like this those ones with noise Super simple sound, so I layer all of three of them uh, without the processing I did right after. So this sounds like super dry. So what I did is like super simple, short, 700 milliseconds, 15% dry wet reverb, a little bit of EQ there, nothing crazy, and I, I just got the, the chop sound. Now it sounds like wet. That's it. That's all for the jump sound. I'm gonna take a look now at Dash, which kind of have the same mechanics and the same procedures. It's weirder. I mean, it has like uh, sound processing on it, uh, especially in this sound here. We're gonna take a look. So first one, I just do the same exact flute, whoosh, and mouth again. You can see here, I'm gonna place this here. Yeah, so I got the flute and the mouth again. With a difference, uh, playing with pitch variations, like, uh, uh, like lower in pitch the flute, so it's longer. Uh, and what I did to the flute whoosh is add the reverb, very really short. Add an OTT, like to bring everything up, like super compression. And then uh, I used a little plate. Let me. I used uh, a little plate on Sound Toys, like one second, 30% mix. And that's all for the whoosh. That's the uh, same whoosh, same sound sample, but different processing so it sounds a bit different it sounds quite longer because of the reverb and then ott it like break it up and then for the mouth i did the same uh eq just messing around uh auto pitch which i modulated this is like the like a tuner i can auto tune of Melda, really good plugins in here. And then I automated this. I I played with the width and the form and shift and automated the, the form and shift. So it does like up in pitch. So it sounds like this. Can you turn this off. It sounds playing with the auto pitch. It goes like up in pitch. Then I super sidechain compressed this to the flute. So the flute sounds first and the mouth sound is uh, quite low. And then the mouth uh, comes up in like 33 milliseconds. You can see here. That's one, two, one, two. So it's clearly noticeable. You can tell the difference pretty easily. So with those two then i did like three like three new sounds to it uh, i'm gonna show you this is a white noise super simple white noise nothing crazy to add like high frequency content and, and stuff and this is a crystal glass i with water with like with the wet finger like going around a, a glass of water and i did like a bit repeat on it so this is processed right before this project but 
uh, and I did like super slow, super cut up. This is already processed in another project, I guess. And then I bit repeated it. With a pitch decay. So it goes like. Brrr. And then I. Uh, we can listen to all, all of them without the last sound, which is this one. So we got this. But the magic comes in here, which is this sound I recorded. I think it's a little bit processed right before, but it's basically like this metal stuff with this metal pen tip. And I did like something like that. I don't know. I did like this. That that's that's the sound. That's the sound. That's the sound. And then I uh, noise reduction a bit because it was a little bit of a mess in the, in the ambience. Uh, redux to to make it like chip tune. Bring oh bring up those harmonics. EQ hard EQ on the mid heights there. And then the crystallizer, which is like the super creative kind of delay uh, sound toys have. And I just played with the dry wet, the peach, which is like 200 negative cents. Uh, splice is 148 milliseconds. Delay is super short and then a bit of recycle there. So it goes crazy, like crazy, super short delay and uh, split up. Little feedback with the recycle and the delay splice. So it goes low really fast. And then I used all of those repetitions and put an OTT so I can bring all the repetitions up to sound as loud as the main sound. And with the OTT, it sounds like this. And then the last one is a delay to make the tail like a little bit longer, 80 milliseconds and like 30% feedback. Now it sounds like tail, longer tail. So that's the real MVP here of the, of the sounds. I added like two variations over here with this slow dash. It's not that that fast, that fast. So I, I took pitches down and automated things. I cannot remember which I automated like crystallizer here. Yeah, I automated crystallizer. Yeah, so it's lower pitch, so it's quite longer. So these are like fast. This is like slower. Yeah. So all of them together sound like this. Slower. So for the group processing, I did I did auto pitch doing up because that's a dash and I had it had to sound like like whoosh like whoosh. So it has to go up in pitch. So I did that with the auto pitch. And then saturator to bring up harmonics. And I loud, louded uh, the high end of the sound, make it sound more harshy or crispy. Nothing crazy. I can turn this off. Sounds pretty well, actually, like this. the auto pitch it goes up in pitch and gives the sensation of, of movement the feeling of movement with it's a dash all about so
So last thing I'm going to show you in this project is how I make uh, UI sounds. Uh, all of my UI are pre-rendered in here because I was just messing around with Massive and Serum, which are the like the two synths I use for, for UI. And then I start uh, resampling all of them. So I don't have even the, the, the Massive and the U and the Serum because I, I, I was like doing the sound, uh, rendering it, resampling. So I have like these sounds. Talk that computer talking, and then I have like uh, these little analogs here, which are actually a lighter, like firing up a lighter here in the mic, and then I started playing with filter and modulation and uh, FM and AM and pitch envelope. Just with the sampler in Ableton and with a lighter sound I recorded, I made all of this. This is like the lighter turning out. I don't know what this is actually. I cannot remember, but it's. And I did like two notes here for the dumb. And this is a shell, shells in, in a bottle moving up like, but this is our process, these are processed, and I don't have the process in here, so I'm not gonna show you those. Um, which I can show you right here, it's how I made the, um, the UI sounds in here. I can show you a quick snap on how I made this. So basically what I do is just open Massive or Zero, and then just thinking of what the UI have to sound like. Uh, with, you have to control like ADSR, like pitch envelopes, like LFOs and all this stuff. So if you know very well what you're doing, it just came by itself, actually. So what I do, Normally, it's take, for example, uh, size square, which is pretty soft. Then I take this envelope, put it over here. So, do I want a short UI sound? Do I want a long, long attack, like really quick snap? So I just play with this envelope, and then it sounds like this. Can I play? Okay, really simple for now. What I do is place another different wave right here. Okay. Okay, now I take, for example, an LFO high rate and square, and I put it on the pitch. Seven semitones, for example. I don't know what I'm doing most of the time, but I just do. You can see there, I can bring this up an octave to make different. Add like white noise bit. And then I can add like a third oscillator there. I don't know. For example. This one. And add like a new envelope to it with a delay, for example. Bring those down. Yeah, you can see the difference. I can turn this up by an update. So you got those. I can add small reverb like that. Little size. You can even automate this. 
now sounds wider, I can play with this. And this is how I made all of them, just by trying different stuff. So if you want a confirmation sound, like a positive sound, you can go to that. And if you want a negative sound, you can go da -dum. So you have yes, no. Very simple. <laughs> Actually, you can start messing around with filters and uh, wavetables and modulations, LFOs. FX, just start messing around. The only thing that you have to consider is where do I have to go? Like up in pitch, down in pitch, like the envelope is going to be a fast one, slow one, slow attack. Do I want a menu sound, like a navigation sound, really simple? That's it. I do like a kind of same processing with Serum. This one, I, 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 I got this one from the last time I, I tried to do this. Uh, this is, um, I open up the noise oscillator here and from my own sample pack, uh, one of the recordings I've got from musical instruments are these drums I recorded in the desert, Morocco or in here, you know? So I used one of those here in the noise oscillator and bring the pitch up and use this envelope for the level and then use a sine wave with the detune for this and this is what I've got from there you know this is the sample from the drum pretty short you can see in the envelope here it's like pretty short decay and no sustain yeah and then the sine wave to add like the tonal thing So that's how I make like all of the UI. The good thing about Serum is that you can import the, the noises, the samples you want in the noise oscillator. So that gives you like creativity stuff. So that's it. That's how I make all of the UI sounds. Nice. So now we're going to take a look at some of the combat sound design I did. So. I've got a lot of sounds in here in the combat sound design, but when I, well, what I'm gonna show you right here is like the bow and the arrow I designed, uh, the fire, the spell I designed, and quick snap of how I designed like magic staff sounds and hits. So the bow as a weapon, uh, it's quite simple. You have to think uh, what which parts of the bow you want to represent, like in sonic space. So the first thing comes to my mind when I think about a bow is the rope, like tensing and then releasing, and then the arrow flying and impacting. So this is what I've got. I separated, split like the sound in two parts, the tense part of the bow, and then the release and the, and the impact of the arrow. Cool. So, what I did here is for the tension, I just use these two sounds. First of all, I use this trunk sound, wicker trunk. Super nice texture. I love it. This is from my sample pack. I got a trunk in my garage. Uh, that sounds like this when I open and close. Yeah. So I started recording it. So I use this for the for the bow tension. The other thing that I have to tense is like the rope of the bow, which is this sound here, which I cannot remember actually what is it. Because I think it's neither these 
this little guitar thing I've got in there. But I, I, don't, I don't think that's it. That's another part of the sound. Maybe it's this rope here in this flute. But I don't know how the hell did I do this because I... It was like something like this. But with another rope. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I cannot remember because I did like months ago. Like a month ago, and I cannot remember, but it was stuff from my bedroom, like a rope and, and, or a, a guitar string or something. So both together sound like this. It's super simple. Uh, I don't have any processing at all on the tens, just like a low cut. And for the trunk, I made an automation here on the fine and put the frequency really turned up. Without the frequency shifter, you can hear it sounds like this. But with the frequency shifter, it goes up a bit weirdly. And it sounds like a... Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's like higher pitch, like more tension. Yeah, so that's 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 a tension of the bow. Yep. And then the release is this. So this is made up of these four sounds. The first one, it's my mouth on the rope. Like the impact, deep impact, which is actually me doing this with my mouth, like tension the rope and releasing it. With my teeth. That's that's the sound. Yeah, I, I know, I know. That's the sounds. I think I bring those up down in pitch. No, actually, high. Yeah, but that's the same sound recorded like a few times. <laughs> this one here. Why? Well, well, this has no processing. Literally, this one here. This one is actually this thing right here. But this is, yeah, this is really low in pitch. So it sounds, because that string is like too short and tiny, so it sounds like high. Yeah, the only thing I process here is little play here. Super short. River without the river, super dry with the river on, nicer. Then I have a quick impact, no pressing. This was a sound I think I made from like months ago in another in another sound design session. I did um, sounds like a blast or. And then, whoosh, exact same whoosh of the flute. Super deep and nice. And then with the whoosh at the start, right before the impact, like this is the arrow flying and this is the arrow impacting. So with the whoosh, I did this magic here sound. <laughs> So basically this sound is made with a rack, which is this one, not this one. Where is it? This one. Uh, which is a rack, able to rack I made by myself. Maybe I put this in Gun Road or I don't know, or for free. Basically what it does is you upload like tons of samples here in drum rack. And you just hit one single note and then randomly all of this trigger with these envelopes, filter and normal envelope, with this random note delay here, random notes, and then a little bit of processing there, like a grain delay in the river you can control here. And an FX module of Ableton and a frequency shifter you can you can all 
you can all touch, you can all play with here. So every time you trigger this random um, sound play, all of these sounds are from my sample pack. So I just took a, a lot of them and put it into here. It, they are like super different. Here we have drums, the jumps, the crystal glowing, flute, weapons, movement, dashes. But every time you play with them, it's randomly generated, so it's a different sound. Say, it sounds like magic. You can see all the samples triggered here. Super nice. Then I have an ARP, like this arpeggiator here, which you can uh, play with the rate, the style, and it makes the sound randomly, like not all of them at the same time with this no delay, but like going like an arpeggiator, like brrrm. So you can do this slowly, and you can see how they come up here. Yep, yeah. you, you can do this super fast. Or you can not do this. So they sound the same time with this random delay. You can make them sound all at once doing this zero and zero. Or you can play with those. Then delay reverb. Then module here with effects. And frequency shift. So it makes like nice magic weird sounds out of almost everything you drop in here because it's it's all you can play with the density too to use like fewer samples or a lot of samples yeah maybe i put this for free somewhere so this is how i make all of these magic sounds this one this one this one this one dropping stuff into there and just messing around with parameters and stuff and filters. These are like more tonal textures and um, pads and ambiences and, and tonal stuff. This one, for example. Yeah. Or this one. Yeah, so I put that with a whoosh. And the first step is the arrow flying, this. And then the impact, this. So we got this. So with the tens. Cool. What I did here, processing, group processing, nothing crazy. Saturator, bring up those harmonics. Glue compressor, glue compressor with a little clip here. It's just like 2 dB. Or 1, 1 dB. Um, and then EQ to bring up this. Moodiness here, this harsh here, that yeah, simple. Nothing crazy. But this is load up in volume. It's just like a mixing processing, more than like a more than like a creativity process. So that's my bow. Um, what I'm gonna show you now, it's my fire stuff. Yeah, I love this sound. So, a lot of stuff coming up here, but really simple. Keep it really simple. First thing that comes in are these three guys here, which are all of them made by this SFX designer I just show you three of the sounds, of the magical sounds I made using this random generator to add that initial whoosh and then release. And with the release, then I added like a super simple impact. It's just smashing some, some low membrane. And then this. This is actually me doing like the same thing I did with the jump 
with a mouth like but then I thought I should make the fire sound out of my mouth too so the fire sounds like so I recorded myself like two million times doing and then I chose the, the best one so this is actually me doing sounds like fire just an EQ there I didn't even process that and then this that's me again oh my god so both together sound like this for me it sounds like a flame like a fireball like dashing over the air sounds like fire isn't it and then another magic here yeah another magic so both three sound like this so if i add the impact and the three other magics no processing in this guys you can see just eq and then the interesting part because you can hear this you can say yeah sounds like fire but not like the super fire sounds like like a little flame in there like oh yeah but it doesn't sound like a fire sound so what the fire sounds comes from is from the tail of the sound which is this yeah guys that's not fire that's me doing weird things so first one here is this guess what it is it's my super trunk is this maybe this one at the end yeah or i don't know yeah this one this one like me slamming and smashing the the wicker in the trunk with no processing actually you don't need crazy processing you just need good ideas and this which sound like fire as heck is nothing else than me smashing and slamming my sheets in my bed like doing this with my blanket If I load that, if I load that in pitch, it sounds like fire. But that's my blankets, my bed. I make it again. <clears throat> so both together sound like fire. I did processing here in both this group of this sound, uh, but it's just a filter freak from Sound Toys, just messing with presets and playing with stuff here, so it's like two band pass filters. And that's it. I can turn this off. Yeah, it sounds... Now you can hear like the sheets and the, and the trunk and you can hear the difference in the sounds like you are recording this by your own. That not... This doesn't sound like fire. But when I do this... Oh, that's fire. That's fire. So if I put this in the tail of my sound, I have the impact and then the tail, and it's super flames. First the spell and then the burning thing. Yeah. So that's all for now. I have another spells. And then here I have the magics. This is all of the render from the from the SFX designer. You can find this in the pack too. It's quite uh, shorter. Yeah. Ah, I forgot about the processing in the in the fireball, the group processing of all the sounds. This is really important. I forgot about it. So, 
without all the processing, it sounds like this. Sounds good, but not that powerful. Yeah, so I added glue compression, then uh, decapitator, five drive T style, and almost full wet. Then the EQ. The EQ, yeah, the EQ is really important here because this brings up the lows and the highs and cut the mids. It's super important because these mids are like plain and they don't have like the texture and character. So I cut all the make all them this 1k hertz. Then OTT, of course, just 15% to bring everything like smash up. And the last one is Shimmer, which is a pretty crazy delay reverb thing by Valhalla. I freaking love this plugin and all the Valhalla stuff. So small stereo dual, and then play with the shift, the fit, feedback, and the size, and the mode. Play with all of them, so you can hear without, and then with the Valhalla. I can turn this mix all the way up to hear what the Valhalla is doing. This played kind of slap delay. Yeah, so I added like the 20% of wet. Yeah, so that's the processing. Cool. So for the last, I'm gonna show you how I made like a talking example with an NPC with a character in the game. Like this kind of talks you can find in games like Celeste or Ori and the Way of the Wisps or Hollow Knight, where you're talking with, with NPCs and characters in the game, you can find like um, no real talk, like no words coming out of their mouth. But instead of that, you can hear this as you're talking with them, as you're reading the subtitles, you can hear like talking stuff in all of kind of this metric bunny and platform animation games. So I have a lot. I can show you this one, for example. <laughs> then I have a female. <laughs> Demon. <laughs> Fairy. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna show that I, they, they are like quite similar in the processing, but I'm gonna show you um, this one, for example. Pretty fast, and I can show the, the fairy one right after, because it's really fun too. So this is me, literally, talking stupid things. That's me. That's me, it's basically. So, what I did is R box from Waves, like compressor, simple gate for the noises in the ground in the in the background. Um, little Alter Boy to change the pitch and a bit of the formant there. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing crazy in this one. Then Maserati. Super good processing plugin for vocals. I use in my musical stuff all the time. Gives a bit of a treble and bass there and a, a little bit of a delay and, and verb. Super cool. EQ, just I want the mid because I don't want the lows or the highs of this. It's just like a raw, like talking sound of an NPC. I don't want it like be super wide. <laughs> then a micro shift. Yeah. 
like 50% dry wood, like 45. Focus, style to detune, play around with this, delay more loose than tight, play around with this and you can find a lot of textures. And then Redux to make it like chip tune like. This is really good. Keeps that hiss in the top end pretty cool. I can show you the same same processing goes for like all of them. Well, I have here like two cents here, like a vocal jobler, jobler from mm, 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 Isotope, which sounds like this. Just like widespread variation in a second layer of vocals. And then a little plate, Valhalla, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, Santois, little plate, like 0.7 uh, seconds. That's a river. Super short, and just to add like a bit of a space, not that dry. Yeah, so I did that to all of the sounds. The fairy one is probably my favorite. So that's me again talking to the meek. High in pitch, obviously. That's me. Like a bit of a girl sound trying to emulate the girl sound with my own voice. So pitch up. Then the same, uh, our, our box for the compression, gate, little alter boy, but this time the alter boy goes obviously high in pitch and I kept like the format to not sounds like, um, like, you know, like super high and like this. That, like a squirrel, you know, so I kept it low. Maserati again, micro shift again, Redux again. This kind is a little bit harder, like seven points of Redux. EQ here is super important. All that mid lows, I don't need them. So I cut and low and then bring up like the mid highs to give like emphasis on them. And then obviously a crystallizer to make this super weird stuff in the back. Sounds good by itself. Like this. And the crystallizer. The crystallizer gives like all the play here. It's just a little bit of wet, but you have like a octave in pitch and then a lot of recycled stuff and the delay is super short. So it sounds like slap back, super high pitch and delay. We can hear only the, the, the wet. Yeah, crystallizer is so good for sound designing. So that's pretty it, guys. I hope you like this and I hope you enjoy my pack and you can use it for your productions. Um, see you on the screen, guys. Thank you.